We know that disasters and crises affect different people in different ways. Being a young boy, an adolescent girl, an adult man or an older woman, for example, largely determines the access, dietary needs and food preferences needed to maintain an active and healthy life. Effective humanitarian food security actors take the necessary steps to ensure that the different needs, capacities and constraints are well understood and reflected through the humanitarian program cycle. Being accountable necessarily involves engaging affected people in the processes and decisions that have an impact on their lives. It also requires talking to people, asking relevant questions, learning to read between the lines, involving affected people throughout the project cycle and letting them know what is going on in ways they can understand, allowing them to contribute. In other words, we take account of people in affected communities so they can participate meaningfully in defining and implementing food security solutions for real problems. We provide accountability by establishing effective information delivery and meaningful dialogue with affected people. We are held to account by inquiring directly. This means we give affected people the opportunity to assess, challenge and even sanction our actions and decisions. By establishing sound accountability mechanisms and two-way communication channels, we contribute to respecting people's rights, dignity and safety. Remember that protection is a key pillar of humanitarian action. This requires humanitarian actors to work closely with communities at the outset of a crisis to identify who is at risk from threats and how and why linking this to a broader analysis of external factors, taking into account and addressing specific vulnerabilities that underlie those risks. But how do we actually weave accountability into our food security work? Let's take a look at the humanitarian program cycle and how it relates to our five AAP commitments. From the outset of preparedness, we need to ensure the active participation and engagement of the different affected groups. One way of doing this is to consult the population and ensure sex and age disaggregated data are appropriately collected and analysed when setting baselines. Promote the cluster's members' in-depth understanding of the local context, culture, customs and beliefs, taking into account the different needs of women, girls, men and boys and their specific vulnerabilities. Talk to affected people. Appropriately reflect the specific needs of women, girls, men and boys of all ages and backgrounds in our objectives, narratives, activities and indicators. Ensure that people-centred cross-cutting issues are routinely incorporated into project plans and proposals during a response. Promote safe and inclusive delivery mechanisms and modalities. Ask yourself, will people with disabilities and women-headed households have the same access to food as able-bodied men during this response? Develop a two-way communication protocol for sharing information with and obtaining feedback from affected communities. Affected people have the right to complain about and report any inappropriate behaviour, exploitation or abuse by a humanitarian worker, including UN staff members. Require members of the food security cluster to incorporate into their work the minimum operating standards for the affected population's protection against sexual exploitation and abuse. PSEA Use monitoring and evaluation to ensure that organisations involved in the response remain accountable to affected people, national authorities, donors and the general public. Ensure that the analysis of humanitarian response plan indicators reflects how different affected population groups are benefiting from the response and recovery programmes. And, finally, conduct a qualitative analysis to see how the commitments made by the cluster were put into practice and how that changed the lives of the women, girls, men and boys in affected communities. Remember our five commitments to AAP. In summary, AAP is about using your power responsibly, engaging affected people in the processes and decisions that affect their lives, ensuring there is ongoing two-way communication and dialogue throughout the project cycle. Approach AAP as a way of thinking, providing a structure for viewing the people we seek to assist as key stakeholders in the work we do and working with them to ensure their dignity and well-being.